Dave Salmon was one of life's real characters and lived in Guildford all of his life. When National Service beckoned, he joined the Royal Air Force and was sent to RAF Oldenburg in Germany. Following demobilisation, he rejoined the railway as a fireman, but because his social life was hampered by the shift work involved, he decided to leave and work for Guildford Corporation as a painter. Dave certainly had an eye for taking photographs and was never without his camera. Not only with an interest in railways, he took photographs of just about everything. Other transport, aircraft, Guildford streets and buildings, carnival processions and social events. He was also Guildford City Football Club's official photographer, supplying the Surrey advertiser with his action photos. When Dave passed away in 2015, I became the custodian of his collection of photographs, some already being published in my second and fourth book in the Rambling Railwomen series. This double DVD set contains part two of his vast collection, digitised from 35mm slides and negatives and medium format negatives. It also contains photographs and rare super 8mm cinefilm, restored to HD video, of Guildford City Football Club in their heyday. Dave was born in Guildford on the 2nd of May 1937 and lived at 17 Artillery Road all of his life. His father James, apart from having other jobs, had been a milkman delivering milk from a local farm called Ponds Farm Dairy at Shear, owned by Major H. Rain. James was also a member of the Home Guard from 1942 to 1944. Following the end of World War II, Dave can be seen here at the VE Day celebration at Shaftesbury Hall in 1945, along with a host of other children of his age. Dave can be seen seated second on the left. In the next photograph, Dave can be seen again as an angelic choir boy at St Saviour's Church in 1949. He is seated in the front row, fourth from the right. Dave was educated at Sandfield School and the next two photos show Dave seated in the front row, third from the left, with all of his school class and also with a couple of his best mates at the time. Dave's father James, an avid supporter of Guildford City Football Club, would take Dave to see matches at the city's local ground at Joseph's Road. Dave was so keen on football, he became the club's official mascot, and because he had access to the players' dressing rooms, he was able to collect an extensive quantity of players' autographs for his autograph book. One autograph in particular was of Stanley Matthews, later to become Sir Stanley Matthews, who played for Blackpool as an outside right forward and was considered by many to be one of the greatest dribblers in the history of the sport. Much more about Guildford City Football Club can be found in a later chapter on the second DVD. Dave also became keen on spotting steam locomotive numbers, and his appetite grew when on holiday with his parents, either at Torquay or Great Yarmouth, on alternate years, where he'd spend hours on railway stations spotting engine numbers. On leaving school at the age of 15, Dave started work as a panel beater at a local garage, but soon became bored and elected to join British Railways as an engine cleaner and then fireman at Guildford Motor Power Depot. Dave's life on the railway and his subsequent passion for taking photographs of steam locomotives are depicted on the DVD set Dave Salmon, A Man in His Camera Part 1, Railways. Whilst Dave was working for British Railways, National service was in force for able-bodied men aged between 18 and 30 years. On Dave's 18th birthday, he was called up and elected to join the RAF. Whilst working at Guildford MPD as a young past cleaner in 1955, Dave was called up for his national service. Because Dave loved aircraft, he elected to join the RAF, and the day after his 18th birthday in May 1955, he reported to RAF Surbiton. 
He then went to Cardington, Bedford to be kitted out and then spent three weeks at Innsworth and Kirkham where training was given on small arms, automatic weapons and vary pistols. Following his initial training at Padgate in Cheshire, Dave's squadron was given the choice of being sent to the Middle East, Far East or Germany and Dave drew the short straw and ended up being sent to Oldenburg, an RAF base in Germany with 2-6 Squadron. It must have been paradise for Dave, as there were lots of various aircraft using the base for him to photograph. Most of his photographs were taken with a medium format twins lens reflex camera, which I suspect he bought in Germany as cameras were less expensive to buy there. Dave spent three years in Germany, being involved in various exercises at RAF Silt in Germany, Eindhoven in Holland, Aalborg in Denmark and RAF Silt in Germany before 2-6 Squadron was disbanded in September 1957. I remember Dave telling me that his squadron leader had his own personalised Land Rover at the base with his own 2-6 Squadron plaque attached. Dave asked his boss if he could have the plaque as the squadron was being disbanded. His squadron leader replied, Yes, but I didn't see you take it. Dave then spent the remainder of his service at RAF Cuxhaven, Germany, before being demobbed on the 1st of April 1958. A selection of caption photographs he took during this time follow. When Dave was demobbed in April 1958, he returned to working for British Railways at Guildford Motive Power Depot. However, because he'd been away for three years, other services being two, he lost his seniority and had to start at the bottom of the ladder again as an engine cleaner. Following a firing school course at Feltham, he was then allowed to perform firing duties with a wide variety of drivers at Guildford and worked on loan at several other southern region depots such as Fratton, working the Hayden Island branch, and Stewart's Lane, preparing the engine for the famous Golden Arrow Express. Sadly, for personal reasons, Dave decided to leave the railway and gained employment as a highways painter. He didn't have a driving licence at first and before he passed his test would be seen travelling to and from work on his trusty bicycle with his paintbrushes and paint. In the next series of photographs, Dave can be seen at various Guildford locations and a police colleague of mine that worked at the police traffic centre at Burfham informed me that he earned the nickname of Dave the Brush.
Dave continued working for Guildford Corporation, later Surrey County Council, until his retirement. Guildford Corporation had their own social club, which was then situated next to the river off Bedford Road, and during these years, Dave was an active member of a snooker team, competing against other club teams. Dave, of course, had also been very interested in photography since his return from national service in Germany and attended courses on photography's finer points, which put him in good stead for what was to become a labour of love. This superb street scene was captured by Dave outside his home in 17 Artillery Road. I suspect it was taken with a Rollicord 5B medium format twin lens reflex camera that he'd recently purchased from Dixon's at Edgware in August 1962. It was probably the first experimental shot taken on the roll of 12 black and white film loaded in the camera. It also exemplifies the mode of transport available at that time and if you were fortunate enough to own a car you certainly didn't have a parking problem. The next shot was taken with a 35mm camera and shows a 1960s Ford Prefect. The negative however shows signs of excessive light exposure and could have entered the camera at the developing stage. The next photo shows another experimental shot taken from Dave's bedroom, out towards the rear of houses and gardens in George Road. Dave's house at Artillery Road had a cellar, and this would become ideal for him to use as a darkroom and develop his own film to produce black and white photographs. Dave's friends obviously took advantage of Dave's talents as a freelance photographer, and he would take photographs of anything that would give him a bit of pocket money. Weddings, party gatherings, social events, etc. In the following two photographs, three ladies are worthy of attention from Dave and his camera. The first is a Mrs Fears reading a birthday wishes card on her hundredth birthday as Mrs Baker looks on. The second is of a very happy Miss Gillingham on receiving a Midland Bank cheque from New City Club Development for £130. Unfortunately, a lot of the photographs shown here have been taken from unidentified negatives and we can only hope that some of the people shown are recognised. In the following set of photographs, it appears that Dave has organised a photo shoot at the snooker tables of the Corporation Club, proving his skills in low light photography. Following an appeal on the Guildford Dragon for names of some of the snooker players depicted in the photos, we were able to name some of the players. Because of his earlier involvement with Guildford City Football Club, 
Clave also became the club's official lineside photographer and would be seen at all of their matches, at home and away. The film would then be developed by Dave in his darkroom at home and photographs sold onto the Surrey Advertiser. A chapter dedicated to Guildford City Football Club, including action photographs and rare 8mm cine footage, is included on disc 2 of this DVD set. We finish this section with a few photographs of Dave's mum and dad, and in some photos he's given the camera to somebody else to take the photograph. Dave was a very keen road racing cyclist and competed in some of the toughest road races in time trials. He was also a member of the Phoenix Cycling Club. In 1961 he came fifth in the Guildford Brighton and return road race in a time of 4 hours 31 minutes 8 seconds and later came third in the handicapped 25 mile time trial in 1 hour 11 minutes 40 seconds. He bettered this two weeks later by coming first in the handicap 25 mile time trial in 1 hour 8 minutes 33 seconds. Dave owned a custom built F grave framed racing bike. Les F grave initially learned the art of frame building before World War II from his first employer Harry Wrench of Paris Wrench Cycles. He moved on from Paris to Claude Butler where again he was employed as a frame builder until 1948. At this point he decided to set up his own business, F Grave Lightweights Limited, at the Averty Works in East London. He went on to produce high quality frames with the emphasis on finely filed and decorative lug work. Dave would keep his racing bike in fine fettle by visiting a cycle shop in North Camp near Farnborough called Rumbles. A.J. Gus Rumble and his son Albert owned the shop that continued after the Second World War up until the 1980s. The next set of photos were taken by Dave at Hernhill Velodrome in 1966, one of the oldest cycle tracks in the world. One of the photos shows Dave Bonner, who competed internationally for Great Britain, and also Tommy Simpson, who tragically died of heart failure during the 1967 Tour de France. Cycling events were quite often staged at Woodbridge Road Sports Ground, now home of Guildford Cricket Club. This set of photographs shows some of the events staged there, all taken by Dave with a Rollicord 5B medium format twins lens reflex camera which he'd recently purchased from Dixon's at Edgware in August 1962.
Dave also did some experimenting with a Super 8mm cine camera and although the action is blurred in parts, I thought it was worth including. The film was taken in July 1970. Dave also travelled to London to watch and photograph a stage of the 1987 milk race. This was a cycling road race that had been staged every year since 1958, the race eventually being won that year by Malcolm Elliott. This selection of pictures shows Guildford Town Centre in the 1960s and 70s. It was a time when it was moving away from an old established market town to becoming a regional commercial centre. In the high street back then there was two-way traffic, a couple of pedestrian crossings, street lamps hung across the road from either side of buildings. Uh, there's an old road sign there, the old style one for the A281 to Horsham. Back then it was often said that Guildford was just full of shoe shops and building societies. But in this picture there's a convoy of cars coming down the high street. Why we don't know, but Dave obviously thought it was worthy of taking a picture of. He took this picture from the roof garden of Harvey's department store. It looks across to Guildford Cathedral. And you can see that the University of Surrey had yet to be developed on Stag Hill. Closer there is the Frari Brewery. The gas holders, of course, of the gas works. And there in Woodbridge Road, you can see the Astor Cinema. And next to it, Guildford's first Waitrose store. Looking down onto North Street, there's the much older Guildford post office with two red telephone boxes outside. The buildings on the left do actually exist today. Otherwise, everything else has disappeared. A panoramic view which may have been taken from the multi-storey car park in Sydenham Road. In the centre there's Harvey's department store. Away to the left you can just see Bridge House near the railway station. There's those gas holders again on the right. And then further down lower right there's the Guildhall in the High Street. Fruit, vegetables and flowers were once the mainstay of the market stalls in North Street and many stalls were handed down from father to son. Guildford held its first market more than 700 years ago. Traditionally, Tuesdays and Saturdays were market days, and for centuries they were held in the High Street. North Street became the preferred venue in 1865 because animal pens were restricting the movement of traffic up and down the High Street. In 1896, the whole market moved to a new site in Woodbridge Road, now where the police station stands. Market stalls returned to North Street in 1919 after the First World War. It was so that people who were growing food and had a surplus could sell them to others. Dave's dad can be seen in one of these pictures. He's standing in front of a sign for fresh cut lettuces. Next to him is a Mrs Hampshire and it's believed that Dave's dad helped out on some of the stalls. Staying in North Street, 
Here are some changing scenes throughout the 1960s and 70s. First of all, we see the demolition of the Congregational Church that was on the corner of Leapell Road, and then the building that replaced it, which still stands in 2020. And then further up North Street, the old Guildford Cooperative Society buildings, all long gone. Who remembers these buildings? Just down from Commercial Road. We've got DER, the TV rental shop, Mother Care, Shirley's, the ladies and gents outfitters, Emos, the chemist shop, and Williams's news agents. The Friary Centre occupies this site today. And a view looking up at a time when traffic came down this part of North Street. On the right, there's John Perrings. That's now occupied by Metro Bank. You can just see the entrance to Woolworths, now the White Lion Walk shopping centre. There's the little White Lion pub. And then the tall spire there, that's the Methodist church that once stood on the corner of Woodbridge Road and North Street. A quick detour down Woodbridge Road here, and we show a lovely shot taken at night of the Astor Cinema, later to become Studio One and Two. You can see that one of the films shown was Mrs Gibbon's Boys, starring Diana Dawes. On the left there was the Record Centre, that later became Wax Records, and on the right you can see the sign for the Astor Bar. We are now at the foot of North Street, at the junction with Friary Street and Onslow Street, and the building that was the depot of the 2nd Royal Surrey Militia from 1854 to 1876. The buildings were later used as commercial premises and also for residential use. People often recall the Albie John School of Dancing that was here, and also Byers, the second-hand shop full of furniture and other goods, and there's also Ayres, the baker's shop. A path led through the arch that went down to the river, where there was a steel footbridge over to the Farnham Road bus station. Dave would have taken these pictures in about 1970, shortly before all these buildings were demolished. Looking in the opposite direction are some of the buildings in Onslow Street that would be demolished to make way for the Friary Shopping Centre. Pickford's Removals and Storage Building, Leonard's a shoe shop, Spooner's which was a florist's and Harry Fenton's menswear. Guildford's main taxi rank is at about this spot today. And then on to Bridge Street, where these buildings of the Quadrant do exist today. But look how different the shops are. Howard's, a man shop, the Olympic Cafe, the old Curiosity Shop, and then a glimpse of what was then the Plaza Bingo Hall, just into Onslow Street. It's quite something to reflect on how Onslow Street has changed so much now. Some of those who traded here, as listed in the 1969 edition of Kelly's Directory of Guildford and Godalming, included Arthur Atkinson Furniture Dealer, Babington's News Agents, Jay Parsons Tool Dealers, the Ferrari Recreation Club and the Oddfellows Lodge. Above Heathorne's The Bookmakers, were some hand-painted signage from a bygone era. There didn't seem to be much traffic around when Dave took this picture of St Saviour's Church. To the left of it, the white building was once the West Surrey Farmers' offices. And then again on the right there, you can just see creeping into the picture what was the Prince of Wales pub. It's interesting to see that traffic was one way in Onslow Street back in the late 1960s and early 70s. Lots of interest here, the Angel Sun and Grey Builders Merchants premises on the left. Right down at the bottom there we can see the Plaza. And then moving up, the offices of Cooks's of Guildford, the coach company, and some lovely adverts for Woodbine Virginia cigarettes and Lions Made ice cream. There was a lot of change taking place in Guildford in the 1960s. And here Dave took a couple of pictures of the Debenham store as it was being built. It of course opened as Plumber's Roddice in 1968. The skyline was changing too as seen here with these high-rise flats, Bishop's Court and Mount Court off Portsmouth Road, constructed by the Guildford builders R. Holford and Company. The foundations have been laid, there's a crane in place 
and soon Guildford's multi-storey car park in Sydenham Road will rise up here. Just to the right you can see the Royal Oak pub. And here the car park completed. Hardly an elegant building but completely functional with the increase of motor traffic and cars coming into Guildford Town Centre to park. We will now take a walk from North Street down Hayden Place and see just how it used to look. The first picture dates to July 1982 and shows the co-op premises shortly before it closed. Established in 1891, the Guildford and District Cooperative Society grew rapidly with its main shop and offices in North Street and Hayden Place. In Britain, the cooperative movement dates from 1844 when the Rochdale Society was established and opened its first shop. Twenty years later, the Cooperative Wholesale Society was inaugurated in Manchester. The simple idea was that customers became members of their local society with their own individual number, which entitled them to receive a small dividend based on all their purchases. It was known as the Divi and became a part of British life. The Cooperative idea spread throughout the country and by 1934, the Cooperative Wholesale Society was a federation of more than 1,000 retail cooperative societies with a combined membership of about 6 million people. In that year alone, its total sales were in excess of £90 million. The Guildford and District Cooperative Society not only sold groceries and provisions, but also furniture and homewares and other services besides. At one time it had branches in Cranley, Leatherhead, Dorking and even Horsham. As we look down Hayden Place, buildings on the left are being demolished. Notice the torn wallpaper on the exposed walls. An extension of the telephone exchange now occupies this site. Further on you can just see the Guildford Youth Centre building, quite new then. And then the building beyond that was once the Co-op Bakery. You can also see the Live and Let Live pub and Beverly Hall. Now looking back up Hayden Place and the co-op buildings there and then being demolished. As we walk further down Hayden Place, the houses on the right still stand. There's the Live and Let Live pub again and Beverly Hall. Next we see Tony's gents hairdressers on the right and coming into view is the Elm Tree pub. Now looking back up Hayden Place from the start of North Place, on the wall of the Live and Let Live pub, there is a poster board for Studio One and Two Cinema. Next, heading down North Place, you'll see a no through road sign. On the right, there's the Beverly Hall. Dave must have taken this sequence of pictures at the same time as he walked down North Place. Looking back once again, the Live and Let Live pub, the Co-op Bakery, and there's a Woodbine sign there above a confectioner's that was known as Bonner's. To stand at this spot today, you'd be roughly in the car park of the Waitrose store. If you were shown this picture out of context with the others, I think it would be quite hard to work out exactly where it was taken. The two women have walked down North Place and they're making their way towards Church Road amid all the demolition of those houses there that can be seen. The final three pictures in this section show a small shop and presumably its proprietors at a location that's been very hard to identify. Before York Road was extended in a westerly direction to link up with Woodbridge Road, it ended at about where Stoke Fields and Sandfield Terraces. Where today Hayden Place bears to the right past Beverly Hall, now the premises of Guildford Action, and then turns round into Sandfield Terrace, that was once also part of Stoke Fields. At that far end, and listed in Kelly's directories at number 32, was J.W. and C.A. Jones Confectioners, with them living next door at number 34. You can see the numbers 32 and 34 on the door of the shop and the house. As can be seen, the shop was called Mayfair. 
Notice the vending machines for YZ Spearmint Gum, Cadbury's Chocolate and sweets called Golden Planet. There's adverts for Brown Beauty Tobacco and Black Beauty Tobacco and one for Wall's Ice Cream. I guess Dave must have taken this picture and the shop's proprietor shortly before it was to be demolished. <laughs> 